Good evening. I'm in Virginia in the hotel. As you can see from the background, there's no candle and no clock. And so it doesn't even matter what time it is. And, oh, it's 7.09. I just looked. <laughs> Two minutes shy of when I started the video last night. And this is video is for tomorrow. I will be getting up early and leaving and hitting the road fairly early in the morning. They do have a breakfast here starting at 6 o'clock, so I'll probably wait till after then to leave. But I'll have breakfast and then pull out. The car will be loaded. And I'll be making the final leg of my trip to the high school reunion in New Jersey. Today's talk is titled Ninth Wave, Joy and Grief. Oh, the conundrums. And I wrote the little blurb. This is the first day of my trip to my high school reunion. I left Melbourne just past midnight this morning and drove 14 straight hours, only stopping twice for gas in South Carolina and Virginia, which is where I am now. When I got to the hotel, I received news that my high school friend lost his son yesterday. My own emotions are swirling right now, as you may understand. Please listen. Since the ninth wave has begun, actually before it began, Back in January, I began doing daily videos, and I made the commitment to do a video every day, regardless of how I feel, regardless of where I am, emotionally, intellectually, spiritually, to let it all hang out and to tell the truth. Because to me, authenticity requires being vulnerable. It requires telling the raw truth. It requires opening our heart and our mind and our life to each other. It was with great joy that my friend Bobby contacted me on Facebook earlier in the year and told me about the high school reunion and even though I did not graduate with the class of 64, it was the class that I grew up with. They were my friends that I went, many of them I went through elementary school from, from third grade in Midland Park and I actually started school in Waldwick. And Waldwick and Midland Park at the time that I graduated, or at the time that the graduation happened, I didn't graduate with the class. But we were merged, the two schools, the two towns had merged and were both part of Midland Park High School. Waldwick and Midland Park shared the same school, junior, senior high. So inevitably, some of the kids that were in my graduating class were people that I grew up with. And one of my best friends was Bobby Vanderklok. And it was because of Bobby that I made the commitment to come to the reunion. And Bobby is a singer, among other things. And his group was going to be performing at the reunion Saturday night, the main event of the reunion, the banquet. And he, I talked to him earlier, and he may not even be there. And it's especially poignant in light of the fact that my own son, just a week or so ago, said, Dad, I hate my life. I don't know what it is that causes people to do things that get them taken out earlier than they need to be. And I don't even know the details of Bobby's son's passing. I don't even know if I want to know. All he told me was that he's been very discouraged of late and overwhelmed by all that he sees happening in the world. And again, I don't know the details. 
I called my son and I told him what would what had happened just before I started this video. Folks, I've been trying to get people to see that the collapse of the old system, while it can be depressing if you don't see what's happening behind the scenes on a spiritual level, if you don't have the overview, it's hard to understand. It's hard to stand under what's going on in the world because it does look like everything is collapsing. And I've witnessed just in the past hour my own joy turn to grief as I share the emotion with my long friend long time friend whom I haven't seen in years. I say long time. I guess friends really need to stay in touch with each other over the years and we never did. It wasn't until this year or possibly the end of next year. I can't remember, but it's, it's certainly been less than a year that we've been in touch with each other again. And we're not the same people that we were when we were high school friends. I can feel the grief because I know how tenuous life can be when someone has lost heart. And if you or someone that you know is struggling right now, I ask please, please find the place within you that is peaceful and loving. It's in all of us. I don't think there are exceptions, not even the psychopaths and sociopaths who supposedly have not even an ounce of compassion, not even an ounce of human tenderness. They cannot relate to human emotion. That's what I've read. That's the textbook analysis. I can't believe that it's totally real because I know that in every one of us, or I've, I'm convinced that in every life form, there is an eternal and infinite spark of the divine that can never be extinguished. No matter what happens, it can never be put out. Even when someone loses hope, it cannot extinguish the flame because it is forever. It is eternal. It is infinite. It is the soul. And everything has a soul. Everything has life. You may not understand that. I probably don't even grasp the full significance of what I'm saying. But I am convinced at a part of my being that even the microphone and the camera and the computer and the walls around me, the chair that I'm sitting on, everything, Everything has soul. Everything is alive and responds to human consciousness. Or I should say to consciousness. Because at some level, everything and everyone is conscious. At whatever level, even if it's just a tiny flicker, at every level, there is consciousness. There is awareness. And there is the ability to respond, to love, to fear, to all the emotions, because it's all energy moving on other energy. It's all it is. And yet it's so much more, because it is life itself. It is the wheel of life. It is the never-ending circle of life the spiral of life, moving, moving, always moving, always changing. You and I are co-creators. We may not realize it yet, some of us. We may not realize how powerful a being that we are. But I want you to know that even if you're feeling depressed at what you see happening in your life or in the world around you, 
You are a powerful creator. You are an infinite child of God, eternal. And there is goodness. There is joy to be had and grief to be experienced. There is. It may be hard to get our minds sometimes around the paradoxes and the enigmas and the conundrums. But if we follow our heart, I'm still convinced we will come home. We will find our way back to ourself. And in finding ourself and in knowing ourself, we will know all that there is to know. We will know God and we will know each other, for it's all contained within the self. Not the ego, not the self with a little s, but the self with a capital S. The higher self that I've been talking about, drawing your attention to these many months of this ninth week. And it's because of this divine spark this essence of who we are, that the ninth wave is bringing the changes that we've longed for forever. It's written in our very hearts. It's written in every fiber of our being, in our DNA itself. It is encoded for us to come home, for us to end the long journey as prodigal children and come home to the Father's house and to celebrate the banquet, the feast, to celebrate life and death, to celebrate all of the experiences, the light and the dark experiences that we've shared together, to celebrate the interconnectedness that we have with one another, that we oftentimes don't even recognize, except when things get bad. What a way to teach ourselves, huh? Do we have to suffer in order to see the bigger picture? Sometimes we do, or we wouldn't keep doing it, would we? Anyway, from my heart to yours, I want to express my love. The ninth wave is almost over. I don't know how much the world is going to be changed by the 28th of October. I am convinced that on the 29th and the 30th and the 31st, there will still be problems that have not resolved themselves. There will still be need for more growth more experience, more contrast. It won't be over on the 28th. I'm hoping and praying that by the 28th something will happen. Maybe on the final day, from the 11th to the 28th. Maybe on that final day, or in that final period of 18 days. Something major is going to shift everything. Maybe it'll be this Saturday, which is the day of the reunion banquet. It's also the day of my friend's son's wake. It's the day of atonement, Yom Kippur. Maybe the eternal significance of that day may come home this weekend. We'll see. Thank you for sharing and listening to me as I share my heart with you. Namaste.